Hi everyone. I wanted to try and explain pipelining in this uh, pipelining in pipelines. Hello everyone. I wanted to try and explain pipelining in FPGAs in this video. And to do that, I've got this uh, simple sum here where we've got A times B times C plus D. And here we've got our A, B, C, D registers here and a clock and a count. So as I increase the, uh, as we cycle the clock, the count increases. And on the positive edge of the clock, we are registering and working out the multiplication of the of A and B into here. So we can't do the um, the result of the A times B times C until we've got the result of the A times B. And we can't add D to it until we've got this multiplication calculated here. So one thing to notice here is that it's taken us four clock counts to end up with a result. Um, and then we can change the, the values to register the, a new, um, to start a new calculation happening. Um, and the reason we can't start earlier is because if we changed D now, then we would get a different result than what we're expecting because we first registered four in at the beginning. So not only does this uh, take four cycles, um, it also uses up a lot of resources and we're using the resources inefficiently because the multipliers are only used one after the other. So we are either using a DSP block in the FPGA as a multiplier and then we waste that on all the clock cycles apart from one or we have to use a lot of our logic elements to create the multiplier and then we're only using it on one of the four clock cycles. So let's see how we can improve that with a pipeline. So what we've done here is we've broken apart the uh, A times B times C into our two multipliers and our add. And critically what we've done is we've added some holding registers here. So the same as before, we register in our what we want to the inputs to our sum here and then when they go into the uh, the first stage not only do we work out the multiplication but we also make a note of what the old ver values of c and d were so on the previous clock we did they were three and four and then we clock it through and those c1 and d1 become three and four and we can now put in a whole new set of values on our input registers immediately so then on the th uh, third clock count we get the values coming through into the stage 2 pipeline again we just make a note of d2 because we're not using it yet but that means that we've got space to store a new value of d and then on the fourth clock count we start getting our result out the end but unlike the non-pipeline version now every new clock we get a new value out and our multipliers are being used simultaneously. So we're making the best use of our FPGA resources. And this is one of the reasons why FPGAs can perform mathematics faster than a CPU, because once you know the algorithm and you've broken it apart into the pipeline, you can be getting a new result on every clock cycle. So even though in an FPGA, the clock is often running lower than in a CPU, um, the, the fact that you're getting a new result on every clock cycle means that your throughput is actually a lot higher than you would get on a CPU. So I hope that explains um, uh, the value of pipelining your algorithms in an FPGA. And uh, I'll put a link in the comments of a interesting read that helped me understand this. And I'll also put a link in uh, to the tool that I've used to generate the SVG animations that animated from the VCD dump files from simulated Verilog. So I hope you find some of this useful and I'll see you next time.